The desire to offer himself to the Father, we can say, is what defines the heart of Jesus Christ. Does it define your heart too? Brothers and sisters, welcome back to Contemplata, a podcast for contemplative souls. In every celebration of the Mass, we join Christ, our High Priest, in His act of offering Himself to the Father. Christ offers Himself to the Father, now, in the heavenly places, and we too offer Christ to the Father from our place on the earth. In our churches, on our altars, we have Christ Himself, the Lamb of God, present in our midst. In every celebration of the Mass, the priest lifts up the Lamb of God and says, through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The people reply with the great Amen. It is one and the same act of offering Christ himself makes in the heavenly places. It is one and the same Lamb who is offered to the Father, both in heaven and on earth. The primary celebrant of every Mass is Jesus Christ himself. That statement might come as a surprise because to our eyes it seems as though the priest at Mass is the primary celebrant. Yes, priests on earth really do celebrate the Mass and offer the sacrifice. But priests do so more as the instruments of Jesus Christ rather than as the primary celebrant. Jesus Christ is primarily the one who offers and is offered. But he involves priests in his action in a most personal way. The priest celebrates the Mass in the person of Jesus Christ. By his power, as his delegate, and as his icon in the church. Thanks to the ordination of the priest and the sacramental character he bears on his soul, when the priest pronounces the words of consecration at Mass, the bread and wine are transubstantiated into the body and blood of Christ. The priest, in turn, offers Christ, the Lamb of God, on the altar, to the Father. In so doing, he takes part in the action of Christ our High Priest, offering himself now in the eternal sanctuary on high. Now, let us consider a very important question for the spiritual life of the whole Church. Do the people, the lay faithful, have any role at Mass in offering the Lamb of God to the Father? Obviously, the people do not bring about the transubstantiation of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. The priest does so. Without a priest, there is no Eucharist. But once the priest has confected the sacred species, once the body and blood of Christ are on the altar, the people are called to join the priest in offering the Lamb of God to the Father. The people are called to co-offer the sacrifice. But precisely how do the people do so? It is principally an affair of the heart. It is a matter of intending to offer the Lamb. Once the body and blood of Christ are on the altar at Mass, you offer him to God mainly by intending to do so. Now, intention is a very mysterious thing, a very interior and spiritual movement of your soul. Nonetheless, it is very important for everyone to become conscious of the need to form the intention to offer the Lamb of God to the Father and to offer Him in a spirit of petition, adoration, reparation, and thanksgiving to God. The more conscious your intention the more your heart actually unites with the heart of Jesus at Mass. A union of hearts consists principally of two people having the same intention. 
friends spontaneously want the same thing. So, let me ask you a question. When you go to Mass, does your heart intend to do what Jesus Christ intends to do, namely, to offer him up to the Father? This intention of his heart is not just any intention, but the most intimate intention of his heart. The desire to offer himself to the Father, we can say, is what defines the heart of Jesus Christ. Does it define your heart too? At this point, though, you might ask for more practical instructions. How do I form such an intention? Well, over the course of the 20th century, multiple approved private revelations have spoken directly to the question of how the people are to co-offer the sacrifice of the Mass. In these private revelations, heaven has given us certain specific prayers for people to say. The prayers, it seems to me, are a sort of formation program for the laity in how to co-offer the sacrifice with the priest at Mass. One might say these prayers are very simple and practical lessons in exercising the royal priesthood of all the faithful. The prayers I have in mind not only form in the heart the intention to offer the body and blood of Christ to the Father, but also express that same intention quite explicitly. The first prayer I have in mind comes to us through the angel of Fatima. It goes like this. O Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore thee profoundly. I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which he is offended. By the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. This prayer is very beautiful and very powerful. It begins with praise and adoration of the Holy Trinity. It makes reparation for sinners. It sends up petitions for their conversion. And it does so by offering up the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world. The intention to offer up the Lamb of God could not be more explicit. What we have here is a very priestly prayer, but it is given to all the people to say. The angel of Fatima was forming the children, even at a young age, to exercise their royal priesthood, to form the intention to offer up to God the body and blood of Christ, to play their part at Mass, and to call down graces upon the whole world. Another prayer is quite similar to the previous one, but comes from the diary of St. Faustina. It is one of the prayers from the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. This, too, is a very priestly prayer, but it is given to everyone. It forms in the heart a specific intention and expresses the intention explicitly. It is the intention to offer up the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in order to make reparation for the sins of the world. This little prayer is perfect for joining in the ministerial priest's act of offering sacrifice to the Father. One does well to say it, either in preparation for Mass, to say it silently in your heart during the Mass, or to say it after the Mass, and even throughout the day. Brothers and sisters, over the course of the 20th century, Holy Mother Church has become increasingly more insistent on the truth that all of the faithful are co-offerers of the Eucharistic sacrifice. Surely, the priest is the one who brings about 
the presence of the Lamb on the altar. He has this power from Jesus Christ himself. The people do not. But together with the priest, the people are called to offer up the Lamb to the Father. Holy Mother Church has been calling upon priests to teach this truth to the people, but mysteries so great are hard to explain. Fortunately, heaven is also on the job. Two approved private revelations have done what authentic private revelations are supposed to do. Private revelations do not teach us anything new, but teach us in simple and practical ways how to live according to the gospel. Heaven has now given us two prayers that teach you how to exercise the royal priesthood, how to co-offer the Eucharistic sacrifice. These two prayers form in our hearts the intentions proper to a priestly people. The lesson is crucial for everyone to learn. Thank you for listening to this episode of Contemplata. Be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.